So welcome to my channel, now that's what we call the good life. Now today I'm going to be talking about all the jobs you can be doing on your allotment or in your home garden in the month of August. Now if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my allotment, my home garden and from time to time my home kitchen. Now one really useful thing to have is to keep a journal. I keep a journal because it's really easy to forget things and also to know like, like roughly when you did it last year and the year before to know you're still on track because there's always the thought of should I've done it this month, last month, this month, next month but if you keep a note of the things you do it gives you a rough idea of what you should be doing so you can really easy refer back to it. So one of the things obviously is harvesting and there's lots and lots of things to harvest. I've got loads of things up my allotment at the moment I've got courgettes, I've got beans, I've got rhubarb, I've got kale, um, I've got all sorts of things and I've got some lovely cucumbers here that I'm harvesting at the moment. So it's really handy to cut cucumbers off with secateurs because it's really really easy to pull the whole plant or to damage something. So if you've not got a decent pair of secateurs, apart from obviously all the other things you can do with them, it's really really handy to have some. Um, oh, I've got quite a few on here which is absolutely amazing. This is um, a smaller variety, um, Nimrod, which I would recommend. Um, I've used F1 Baby before, again another one. I find these little cucumbers personally a lot easier to grow and the sums and um, which which are this variety where you don't have to worry about um, pollinating it basically does itself and um, so it makes life a heck of a lot easier. Um, I've harvested all my um, strawberries already so my netting can come off. Um, I've got lots of berries over the allotments I'm sure there's lots of berries you can be harvesting at the moment and um, if you've got cauliflowers in there'll be cauliflowers so tomatoes lots and lots of tomatoes which we'll be taking a look at in a minute and um, so it's keeping on track of the harvesting and either cooking with it freezing with it or preserving with it something that I do I do make a lot of jam and I freeze a lot of my produce and um, I've also got a dehydrator and I'm, I'm drying some berries at the moment and we, we, we do have an allotment shop and I do recommend a dehydrator that I've had for many many years and um, it's an Andrew James one it's really really brilliant and it's not that expensive either and um, so that's that's worth thinking about if you've not got a way of drying um, your fruit and vegetables if you want to do that too so something I'm doing is tidying up. Gosh, there's loads and loads of weeding to do at the moment. My beans have well and truly finished. Um, so my broad beans have well and truly finished, I have to say. My runner beans and my French beans have only just started. So pulling up all the old canes, tidying up, putting stuff in the composter, lots of weeding. I came down here this morning and really, it was really quite clear not that long ago. And then all of a sudden, within a few weeks, some things are finishing off like my peas um, and I've got loads of weeds so I've already, I've only been out here you know 15 minutes, I've already got quite a big bag full um, to clear away so there's plenty of uh, tidying up, weeding um, you can be doing as well. Like I said I'll be taking off my netting off my strawberries now because they've well and truly finished. So as we move around there's some jobs you can be doing on your tomatoes um, if you've not been keeping up with that. So let's move round into the greenhouse, which will be easier to show them in there. So the lovely polypops have almost finished. And they're absolutely beautiful. So one of the jobs, obviously, apart from obviously harvesting your tomatoes when they're ripe, and um, coming out here every few days and obviously making sure that everything's well watered if it's not raining and obviously if it's in the greenhouse you have to water it because it doesn't get its own water so apart from the obvious thing about taking the tomatoes off when they're ready then the other thing um, that's worth doing is taking obviously any side shoots that you've got obviously taking those out as you can see you've got the main stem there and I've been removing all the side shoots that have been coming out so I've just got one main stem growing up but something that obviously helps you to not get pests and disease and also speedens up the ripening process is as each truss of fruit is complete you just remove the leaves below so it was, like I said it does two things it improves the airflow and you're less likely to get disease and it also speedens up the drying process as well so obviously you only remove the ones below the completed trusses 
and you don't remove all of them so there's quite a few here that I can take out and finish this all off later but it like I say it just helps helps ripening and helps stop any disease I'm hearing a few people mentioning that they've got the dreaded tomato blight um, and obviously it's a concern when the weather starts to get quite wet damp and humid but if you if you take the leaves off you can't guarantee that you're not going to get it but they're less likely to get it if you do things like that and if you do get it hopefully it won't be quite as severe um, but it is just one of those things and obviously keep these ones I've got um, these twines I just twizzle it around and obviously if you've got tomatoes that are outside you do need to keep tying them up as you go up now there's other things you can be doing if you've got some fruit trees like plums you can prune them at this time of year because it helps stop silver leaf and if you've got certain types of apples and pear trees spurring fruit and trained ones again you can prune those if you want to this time of year and again having a decent pair of secateurs is really really useful to be able to do that job if you basically couldn't do it if you didn't have it um, the other thing to watch out for is disease at this time of year so over the allotment I've got my brassicas covered to keep the white cabbage butterfly and the white fly off um, I use EnviroMesh and some scaffolding net and that keeps most of it off it's no guarantee that you'll get to keep everything off of it um, but to keep stuff netted and keep an eye out for flea beetle and that kind of thing um, I didn't cover my pak choy and it's absolutely covered in flea beetle whereas my brassicas that I did cover haven't got anything on them so it just does go to show that it does make a difference but if you have got something on your plants obviously there are sprays you can get um, on the market whether you choose organic or whatever you choose there are always options out there so don't give up with what you've got and I get stuff as well like I said I've got flu beetle on my pack toy um, you know so you're going to get something so don't be disheartened if everything you've got isn't perfect it's all part of the process with gardening you know generally overall I get absolutely plenty and plenty another thing to be wary of you'd think August everything would be calm dry sunny no wind well actually August can be quite windy at times so keeping an eye on anything that's staked up and um, especially things like your beans or your tomatoes to make sure they're really securely tied down so if you do get a gust of wind and it is really windy that you don't you know your plants don't snap off I went up the allotment the other day and someone else's tomatoes had just completely hit the floor now whether or not they were all right or not when the canes broke will remain to be seen but just keeping a little bit of a watchful eye on everything that it is tied up really really well so the other thing is if you're going on holiday what do you do when you go on holiday well, my best advice is to give the ground a thorough soaking before you go harvest anything you can harvest even if it's not quite big enough and um, because obviously if it grows too much while you're away it might go over so anything that might go over obviously get those things off um, and try and get a friend to help you while you're away I mean that's what I often do they come and they water if necessary and they keep an eye on everything and guess what they get some free produce so normally I find it really easy to find someone to help so don't be embarrassed to ask people for help it could be another allotment holder but often I just get someone who hasn't got one someone who's got an interest in eating good food and fruit and vegetables and it might actually then inspire them to grow something as well which is always a win-win so there are some things you can be sowing at this time of year as well I have done a full video on it which there will be a link up there for you to be able to watch if you want to um, but things like le lettuces radishes you know there's quite a few things that you can be popping in in August if you want to spring onions is another thing but the full video is there if you want to watch it the other thing is if your main crop raspberries have finished fruiting you can cut the old canes down if you want to it's not urgent to cut them down but that is another job you can do if you want to in the month of August now I do hope you've enjoyed this video and please give us a like and tell us what you liked most and also tell us how you're getting on as well on your allotment and home garden